What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome to my rise to fame, so uh, this is the first match of the African Cup of Nations, my first major international tournament, <laughs> and that comes I think a week after getting sacked, so that's a, that's a bit of an achievement in itself. Uh, I'm going to show you quickly the job update, I've applied for pretty much every job apart from the Serie A job, because I know I'm never going to get that, there's no point in me applying for it, and the Plymouth job of course. But all the other jobs I have applied for, so, um, yeah, hopefully I can get, um, maybe a Coventry Stevenage job, one of them too, it's not a respectable job, maybe the Brazilian job if not as well. Of course, I don't think I'll get a Premier League Championship job, but why not, why not apply? Why are they rich? Wait, why are Burnley rich? They valued at 83 million. Something, something must have happened there. Hmm. Apparently not. Apparently hiring Andrelez vs Boash. <laughs> I don't know, it's very weird how they've suddenly become rich. I, got, I don't know how you can... Uh, I'm not sure if I can view their owners, maybe? I mean... Uh, I don't know, it's weird. That is really weird. They're suddenly really rich, Burnley. But yeah, that's it on the news front. Meanwhile, I'm going to go into team selection for this one against Guinea. This is the big match. Really important match so this is the team it's going to be a f uh four five one basically a four three three however you want to perceive that so we have makalamba in goal which is going to be an epic struggle just for me to try and pronounce some of these names but i'll give it a go anyway then it's bashala mazana i'm going to open up the guys as well so you can see them playing right back noel bonnie playing center back i think he's a he's probably our best center back okay he lacks the str um the tackling and jumping but i mean them, them, that stat there, he's the most technical gifted centre back I think you'll probably ever find. He plays for the Democratic Republic of Congo, that's so good. Uh, then it's uh, Zak Zakani, the Peterborough centre back, as our next choice. Then we have Ilunga, Ilunga. Uh, of course, I said that former West Ham plays for Wickham right now. Then we have Yusuf Malumba, Malumbu, uh, playing CDM, Mkadi. Playing, what is he playing currently? Deep line playmaker defend. Yabo is playing advanced playmaker attack. And those attacks are a sport or support. Then we have Cedric on the right attacking mid. Uh, Lua Lua on the left attacking mid. And Sembolo up front. So <laughs> I think I said some of them wrong, but that was a decent enough effort. I mean, some of their names aren't too hard, like Malumbu and Cedric. <laughs> a couple other names like that one there. Basahi Mazanda. Is a hell of a name. So let's go into this game. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's just go. So this is our team. We are currently facing a 4-1-3-2. Very narrow-minded. Guinea. So. Oh, avoided defeat for eight consecutive games. We've got a hell of a task. Ivory Coast have won their first game against Sudan. I've been in charge for two weeks of the Democratic Republic of Congo. I forgot to show you that I actually played a game and drew but i don't think that was too important because um well i accidentally p played the wrong formation for half a game i'm kind of trying to think i think we should go calm try and calm their nerves nerves yeah we go try and relax them up i think that'll be the team talk basically and touchline instructions i want you guys to exploit the flanks since they're playing very narrow why not try and use that against them so I kind of thought, I was trying to think about like what to talk about in this game, because cool, in these live comms, why is my Xbox on? Because, um, of course, I'm not in a job, there's not much to talk about really, apart from the fact I'm finding a new job, trying to find a new job, stuff like that. I can talk about developments in the next one, but right now, there's not been no real developments. So what I thought I'd do is I'd talk about the African Cup of Nations, because that's quite current, it's going on right now. And uh, thinking about it, there were a couple of really major teams in Africa, of course, Cameroon, Ivory Coast. They have um, Ghana, uh, Nigeria. There are some pretty big nations in Africa. I'm trying to think of any other ones. But there are some that you'd consider uh, they are quite well-known African countries, really. Zambia is quite well-known as of recently because they won the last African Cup of Nations. But that's what I wanted to talk about. Like When I think about the African Cup of Nations, I say um, in recent years, the Ivory Coast have probably got to win it. They've got such a strong squad. They're, a lot of the players now play across Europe. But yet, we find teams, this is a good counter-attack here, we find teams like Zambia beating them in the final. I mean, hang on, let's see. Let's see this highlight. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's just it's just weird thinking about it because um, the like Cameroon, there's so many big nations that uh, when I see them in the World Cup and I see them face teams, I'd say yeah, they're probably gonna win. And I don't know, it's just weird thinking about that because um, they seem to struggle when it comes to their own own nation, uh, own continental competition. Oh, we are all over them. If we're not gonna go, yes, get in there, Cedric. Whoop. What was that? Went past three men to get a goal. Alright, this is what we need. If we can beat these lies, we can beat Sudan. I think that's pretty much secured us through. So, good goal. But it's only seven minutes gone. We can't get too ahead of ourselves. But yeah, yeah, it seems weird that they struggle on their own con continental competitions. The fact that, yeah, like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd predicted the Ivory Coast to have won the African Cup of Nations last year and the year before that as well. Um, not last year, sorry. Yeah, uh, two years ago and two years before that. Uh, considering the fact that they are basically who they are, they are such a big team, and yeah, um, yeah, I think the Ivory Coast haven't won it in an absolute in ages. I don't think they've won it in, and it's I don't understand that because um, and the thing about the big uh, normally it is the reputation of players how you judge a nation because of course the bigger the reputation, the better, and now because of Europe's big domination in world football, the fact that uh. With, uh, if you play in Europe, you're considered um, an elite uh, from um, from any continent, really. If you play in the Premier League, that gives you a bit more of a boost as well, considering how fast tempo, how strong, how quick you have to be, things like that. It all gives you a bonus. You play in one of the major European uh, leagues. And I find that the Ivory Coast, they have a lot of that now. And that more and more African players are starting to come into, oh, starting to come into European leagues. <laughs> and... It's bizarre thinking that. Um, I know the Ivory Coast keeper's name's like Barry Kone or something like that. He's he plays for European team. I can't try to think of the European team. I think it's like a lot of Scandinavian teams. I know a lot of Scandinavian teams, Russian teams, surprisingly, have quite a few African players like um, An An Angie. I think I say Angie Makalaka Shakalaka Ding Dong. <laughs> uh, they have Eto and uh, Traore up front, and Eto a Cameroonian, Traore Ivory Coast. So that's two African players up front. Considering Russia isn't Russia isn't the most, I don't know isn't the nation you'd expect to attract the African players. Considering uh, the fact that like the thing come out of Zenit not long ago saying they wanted no uh, Russian squad, no blacks, no Jews, things like that, no gays. It's quite it's quite extraordinary to think that. And if you look at this squad here, it is adult, like the the ones in this squad here are ones that play in Europe. Okay, a lot of them don't play for top. European teams, but the fact they're playing in Europe is just a better footballing standard, and the African football itself is growing in a standard that I reckon they could. I mean, if I was to rank maybe, I don't know, like continental competitions in like the, um, what is it, the Copa America, the uh, Oceania Cup, I don't know what the Oceania Cup is, uh, the North American Cup, and things like that, if I were to rate them, the continent in that order, it'd probably be like Europe first, South America second. And then in third, I'd probably uh, edge Africa now because I'd see Africa as more of a bigger team. It's either Africa or North America because, of course, Mexico and USA are so big. But then again, but then they don't have many other big North American teams. And then Africa is quite a few. Like I named a few. Like I named like four or five. I think four. We are all over this game. So yeah, um, I've not actually kept up to date with the African Cup of Nations. My friends at school, at sixth form, they have, but um, me personally, I haven't. I do know. One of the latest results when I'm recording this on the 25th of July, of July of January, Jesus, I'm like six months ahead of myself, but <laughs> the 25th of January, uh, Nigeria were one new up, as the last thing I remember, uh, MNEK scored, and John Obi Mikel, of all players, missed a penalty. <laughs> oh god, that has to be the Chelsea player, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, any other things I can think of? Uh, I know Democratic Republic of Congo, because... I mean, when, you, when you're when you involved in a club or something, you kind of spot them out when you watch like, Sky Sports News or you go on BBC Sports. 2-0! Get in there! So, looks like we're going to win this game. Exploiting them wings. What fools! What fools with their formation choice? Yeah, I saw Democratic Republic of Congo drew with uh, Niger, I think it was. I don't know. Uh, what, they, wait, what am I doing right now? Half talking, half thinking. It's not good. But yeah, they drew with a, tea, with a national team that had Never won in the African Cup of Nations. <laughs> it's not too good for them. 
Uh, I'm happy with this. Keep it going, lads. This will be a great win. If we can win here, we can get up. The further we go in this competition, the better, really. Try and build on, because we've got the World Cup qualifications coming up soon as well. Democratic Republic of Congo. I had a look at that. Uh, who, when's it drawn? I think it was drawn sometime in January in the game, which is, I think, where I am right now. And they are played in November or something like that, because the African... There's a lot of small African teams that aren't haven't got a UA, um a what is it not UEFA ranking a world ranking they're just a lot of non ranked teams and they all get given a chance to compete in the World Cup but they have to qualify and there's like x amount of state there's so many stages I think there's like three stages of knockout and I think the Democratic Republic of Congo take part in one of that and then there's like a group stage and I think then there's an additional knockout just to narrow down the African teams even more. South Africa, I forgot to mention them in the, in the list of long names of major African teams. We are all over them. And I think again, we, I think we're going to get... Oh, wow. I was just say, I think we're going to get a goal here. But that guy's massive head there. It's just got in the way. <laughs> oh, and... I don't, know, I don't really know what to talk about right now. Huh? Let's just hope we can win this game. Come on, Malumbu. They, uh, despite having a narrow form, I think they've gone to a 4 4 2. Looks like. I oh, know, wait. That's got to be. It's 3 0. 3 0. And now they have a mountain to climb. Oh no, before when it was 2 0, they didn't have a mountain to climb. Despite the fact they only have 45% possession of five shots on target. But now, now nah, suddenly the mountain has been formed. Right, we don't see that again. It looked offside. I don't care. <laughs> I'll support these lads to the end if it's offside. I mean, if a goal looks like slightly offside against me, I'm going to be up against it. I'm going to be, oh yeah, it was offside, definitely. Unless I can probably see, oh yeah, that man was onside. But yeah, if it's, if I can't tell, it's always off. Another thing I talk about, um, Eden Hazard. <laughs> the, the kicking the ball boy thing. Uh, what's, the thing is, the irony is, when I watched it, I watched it happen, and the kid was rolling around. Oh, I can't really say kid, because in fact he's older than me. But when the and he was rolling around, the guy, uh, the ball boy, going, "Oh, my ribs, ah," and stuff like that. I was thinking, I, I presumed he wasn't young. I, I presumed he wasn't old. I presumed he was, I don't know, thirteen, fourteen, something like that. And when it come out, he was seventeen. I was like, how can he react like that and be a seventeen-year-old? I mean, first of all, Eden Hazard isn't a very big player. I support Chelsea. I don't agree with what he did, but it was just, it was just comical. <laughs> that um yeah what he did but I don't understand how he could react like that to me if you get kicked in the stomach like that surely you should get up in a, in a some sort of anger or something you don't just get booted and roll around on the floor I mean Hazard's not big what is he like 5 something 5-5 five five or something uh, me personally I would have got up from that because the way he was doing it it just it acted like a little child and the point was the thing was pointed out on BBC Sports by Danny Mills is the the the, per, the ball boy is 17. Eden Hazard is 22. They're only five years age difference. And if the ball boy's a year older, he's then considered an adult. So the way he reacted just was just, just made me laugh so much. Like I say, um, I'm 16. So um, I, when I found that out, I was sort because I was I was re I was saying my reaction, thinking that it was like a younger person who didn't want to get up. But if someone boots you like that in the stomach, you don't lay on the floor because it didn't even look too hard either. But you don't lay on the floor. You kind of get up. And because your adrenaline starts pumping then and you kind of get angry. You're sort of like, why the F is he booting me? And you go, you try and cause a confrontation. But you don't, you don't just like roll around on the floor like he did. And like start rubbing his eyes in his coat to try and get red eyes like he'd been crying. <laughs> uh, but I guess that's what you get. I mean, the director, it's your son of the director of the football at the club and things like that. But yeah, the incident itself was pretty like booted in player in the body. I think Hazard's been fined or something, or he's going to get some sort of ban. Either way, I think, whatever Hazard gets, he deserves. <laughs> but it's just such a bizarre situation. And the way people were like, um, on Talk Sport, they said, uh, Swansea coach come out and said, oh, we never told him to delay the ball. It's rubbish. I've been a ball boy before. They tell you. They, they give you the sly message, like, if the team's winning, you throw the ball back quickly. If the team's losing, you grab onto it and you you hold it a bit. You take your time, you walk over to it, you grab it. If they tell you to throw it to them, you sort of roll it to them, make them have to pick it up and stuff like that. They, It's just a natural common sense thing. that they, they, They're they all told to do it. They're all time to waste time if you're winning, to pass the ball if you're losing quickly. 
And I, I just think the kid took it maybe that like step too far, far by jumping on top of the ball. <laughs> but still, just absolutely mental thing for Hazard to do. And yeah, I don't think you'll see that in a while. Oh, and <laughs> so we're, we're wrapping up here 4 0. I just got to put the league table up, actually. Actually, no, it doesn't make a difference to the league table because we never play the same time as the Ivory Coast until the last game of the season. Until the last game of the season, until the last game of the group when we actually play the Ivory Coast. So by that time, hopefully, like I say, we'd have six points. Um, the Ivory Coast will probably have six points at that time, and Guinea will have hopefully draw, as we can see there. Hopefully, would have drawn against Sudan and made us. Easy stroll to the final, otherwise we're going to have to draw our last game just to secure it mathematically. What? Alright, this this game's wrapping up, come on. Wow. Really? You shoot your right foot there? I mean, left foot's fine, but right? No, I don't, I don't see that. Alright, I, I probably would. I should have gone defensive, kept the 4-0 because the clean sheet is nice morale boost as well in the defence. But it doesn't matter. Is that guy white? No, nah, he can't be white. It's not South Africa. Still. <laughs> I thought he looks white from a distance. I think he must be like mixed race or something because uh, I don't think many white people take part in this tournament. Of course, South Africa are white. Maybe occasional white person for another country, but I don't. I doubt it. There are many. So that's it. We win four one. This is a game that we had to win really to help us progress. You know what? Um, I'm happy with your performance, lads. That wasn't very good. That wasn't a good team talk. Again, I don't think these guys respect me. Maybe because of the fact I don't speak French. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna stop with the team talk then. Yeah, this was a game we had to win to um. Give us an easier time trying to qualify. Our next game is against Sudan. Their next game is against the Ivory Coast. Hopefully they'll lose that. So the bottom two teams will be on zero. Top two teams will be on six. We'll just qualify through. It'll be the Ivory Coast game. It'll be a nothing game. And um, yeah, it'll be an easy stroll through. So let's just continue forward and read, some, read a couple of this. So a 4-1, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DROC. Beat them 4-1. Cedric is on form. Makadi delighted with the victory over Guinea. Democratic Republic of Congo can build on this victory. Uh, squad reaction positive. Oh, squad reacts positively to the result. The mood within the Democratic Republic of Congo camp has improved following the recent performance against Guinea. It improved has led to a buoyant mood that's been witnessed within the Democratic Republic of Congo camp and the fans are jubilant. So, this is for this episode, guys. So that I will meet you back in how many days until? How many days do we have off? The twenty fourth. What is that? One, two, three, four, five. Five days. Uh, I could have just read it. So, I mean, in five days' time, where we'll face Sudan, hopefully we'll win there, and then the Ivory Coast game will be a nothing game, like we said, like I said, and we can go through to a knockout round. So, until then, peace out.